If I told you that the concept of contactless delivery existed 357 years ago, would you believe me? Today, on Adventures and Experiences, join us as we explore a small English village where people managed to resist the deadly plague in the 17th century through an incredible act of selflessness. We will explore how people dealt with this crisis, how they managed to get food supplies, and will share more about names that are still remembered in the village history. This is a story of loss, sacrifice, and resilience of a village who proved to be an inspiration for so many, especially in the past couple of years when the coronavirus changed our lives. We started our trip by driving through the beautiful Peak District National Park in Derbyshire and arrived in Eam, a beautiful village with stone cottages. The bubonic plague, also called the Black Death, was an infection spread mostly to humans by infected fleas that traveled on rodents. The plague killed over 25 million people in Europe during the Middle Ages. In the 17th century, the plague had reached England and people were already dying in London. Eames inhabitants might have escaped the disease had it not been for an infected bundle of cloth. In the late summer of 1665, a package arrived in Eam from London. It was for the village tailor Alexander Hadfield. His assistant, George Vickers, opened the parcel and realized that the cloth was damp, so he decided to hang it out by the fireplace to dry. Little did he know that the fleas that jumped out of the cloth carried the deadly plague bacteria. After getting bitten, George Vickers started developing symptoms and days later he died. The conclusion was imminent. The plague had come to Eam and the death toll started rising. Eam had a tight-knit community, and the villagers went to the rector at the parish church, William Mumpison, and asked for his guidance. He knew that if the villagers left, they would risk spreading the disease further, and that would kill hundreds, if not even thousands more people, so he showed leadership by introducing a quarantine measure in the village. The people of Eam agreed to go into quarantine, but that meant they had to administer any medicines themselves and had to bury their own dead. We have arrived at the Riley Graves. This is where, within a span of seven days, a lady named Elizabeth Hancock lost her husband and her six children. And because of the bubonic plague that was happening at the time and people were in quarantine, they were self-isolating, she had to drag their bodies up this hill and bury them herself. So it's, it's quite tragic what happened and the fact that it's really hard to lose a loved one, but having to bury them yourself and not just one loved one, seven loved ones within a week. Wow. And that's really worse. It's very tragic. Yeah. Are we allowed to go in? Yeah, we're allowed to go in. It's part of the National Trust. You can see the sign at the bottom. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah? That's right. And there are their names on every gravestone. So the seventh one, I can see is different. So one of them is different. What's the difference, Alex? I am not sure. The writing is not very good here. So we must give our respect. Yeah. Surprisingly, after all this, after everyone in her household passing away, she didn't. So that's one fact about the some of the inhabitants of, of Ian Village is that they have some genes that make them immune to the plague and other diseases. And she had to, you were saying she had to drag them all the way up by yeah. herself. Yeah. And I'm telling you, where we came from the village, it's quite a walk. It's literally at the top of a hill. So how come she picked this spot? Or are you not sure? I'm not sure. Unless she lived somewhere nearby. I'm thinking maybe she lived at what is now the Riley, um, I think it's a house, the Riley Farm House, maybe. That's nearby. So this so is, this is, there. I'm sure she owned that land. She owned, she owned yeah, this land probably. here. probably. But she wanted to bury him far away because of the... The plague, yeah. And so nobody else gets infected. Wow. Well, you can see um, that George uh, Darby uh, died in the 4th of July in 1666. Uh, uh, and his daughter Mary as well. Um, Two months later. Yeah. Um, now his wife, George's wife, survived um, and then died in 1674. So I can see that Mary's, um, his daughter's grave there. 
and that's George. I think they were buried by George's wife. The people of Eam must have realized that if they went into quarantine to avoid being killed by the plague, they would end up starving and potentially dying of hunger. Fortunately, this was solved by having people from other villages who would deliver provisions to a desolate spot at the outskirts of the village marked by a stone. This is now known as the Boundary Stone. We are still on the way to the boundary, stone. the boundary Stone. It is difficult to find, by the way. It's not easy to find because there's a lot of roots and roots it says that, you know, dead end, dead end, dead end, and etc. Um, but once we find the root, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to get uh, to it and put a root. We are now sat near the boundary stone between the villages of Eam and Stony Middleton. When the Black Plague hit the village of Eam in 1665, the villagers would come to the boundary stone, they would take coins, place them in these holes that they would sterilize with vinegar so that they would get disinfected. The merchants would come, pick up the money, and they would place the goods near the boundary stone so that the villagers of Eam would come and collect them without having any contact, similarly to how we did in the lockdown with COVID when we had contactless delivery. So at the moment we are here and we're going to be exploring all the way this side near the cottages and then come back. So we came back from the Boundary Stone and from the Riley Graves. The village is small so you have, you can manage to, to cover it in a few hours but we came on a sunny day too and it's really beautiful. Okay, let's go explore. So we are inside the church now, uh, the British church, and that's the famous cross there. Did you visit? Uh... I visited some of the graves, but I saw where people who fought in the First World War yeah. are buried, which is up here where the big cross is. Oh, look at the hat! It's getting dark. No, oh, I think they put the hat there um, well, maybe for, for, for soldiers. The role. For yeah. soldiers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that for the role that specific person had? No, or I think I think that's what they do. It's like uh, it's a mark. It's oh, a yes. mark of a soldier. Yeah. So they put their hat, his yeah. hat there. I know the poppy is for um, World War. What's uh, a poppy? Soldier. The poppy, you know, the flower. Yeah. That is the mark of, uh, you know, commemorating the veterans. You mean this flower here? Yes, the red one. The red with black. That's this. The poppy. Yeah. That's the poppy um, flower. Wow. And here what is it this? Says, it talks more about the Hawksworth family. Yeah. Humphrey, aged 15 months, their son died a month later in October. Jane was the sole survivor in the household. Altogether, including her in-laws, she lost 25 relatives. Wow. So imagine because everyone stayed in the same village, you would catch it from one another. Even though they try to isolate. Well, if you isolate, you isolate, you know, like we did with COVID, like yeah. in a bubble. So if you isolate with the family members in it's a household, same. then you lose, yeah. And this is the plague cottage. cottage. So this is... Rose Cottage. So nine members of the throne family lived here. They all died. Oh my god. Again. And look look how many just a few days from one another. Four yeah. days. One day. So his daughter died on the thirtieth and his wife the next day. So this is the hall. Ian Hall, yes. And why this uh, hall is important? Because this is where people of the village would gather it's like a community hall yeah See, it's in the 17th century a manor house yeah it has a wall garden that's again historic so it's from the 1600s and it's still used till today how many hours do you think people can spend here if you want to have food as well and everything easily three hours three hours yeah 
So, because so allocate three hours yeah. or more, minimum. Or more. So, should we say four hours? Four maybe? hours, yes. Allocate four hours of your day to come here. Yeah. There is a... The, the oh, car park. Oh. One second, I want to take the picture. Oh. The video of that. Is that the one That's a small Bean? car. That's yeah. from Mr. Bean. Yeah, what's it called? Um, oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll have to find it. Ra, we'll ra, ra. No. Um... We'll put a word somewhere here. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. We'll find it. But remind me, Mr. Bean. Yeah, with a with a it's a car with three wheels. Yes, two at the back, one at the front. We're heading to the car now. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoyed exploring the village of Eam today with us. Yeah. And just learning more about sad story. Sad story, and what an example! What a beautiful example of resilience they were. Yeah. Back in the that day. That lady, she buried her family. Yeah and how tough times were back then, so... Yeah, we think we have it tough. Yeah. But we don't really. We don't. And it just helps to appreciate life a bit more, appreciate yeah. human sacrifice a bit more. And we hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this video, make sure you watch our other videos. Friday at two o'clock. Yes, British Standard Time. We are considering more, doing more videos throughout the week. Yes. If that's something that you are interested in, please let us know. In the comments down below. Yes. Okay. For now, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time